Well, I think you've got the spinning wheel out today. Yep. So this is the that was the first step in making clothes. Okay. If you if you need clothes for your family, the first thing we have to do is give the sheep a haircut. And that's that. That's over here. And uh, you see, do they hate? Do they like it? Yes, in the summertime especially. In fact, it's bad for a sheep to get too much wool weight on them. The weight can, of the wool can get real heavy. I would think that would be a a, a real heavy coat in the summertime. Mm -hmm. It is. They like getting a haircut. So okay. after you give them a haircut, then, then what do you do? Well, you pick the straw out, you wash it, you skirt it, you take off the parts that are not going to be good for spinning. Um, any any parts where the sun has bleached it, it gets a little brittle at the tips. You can break them off uh, and wash it up. And then what you have after that is this. This oh. is the washed Please. Okay, that that looks a lot better. So this I can work with. Okay. So All it's right. been washed. And oh, after that's you wash it, then you can card Looks a it. lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> the next process is to card the wool. Oops. This part here is called charging the cards. Okay. So all you ladies out there, remember, this is called charging the cards. <laughs> and basically you just break up the, the fibers a little, break it up and a little bit. And what's the purpose of doing this? This is so you can get the fibers all straightened out a little bit, all going basically in the same direction, and then I can spin it. In the state it's in right now, it'd be harder to spin. Card in the wool makes it easier to spin it. It takes out the knots. It's just like brushing the knots out of your hair. You're taking out the knots and getting all of the fibers. Oh, all okay. The Can I touch that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like little needles. It's like a brush. Yeah. Oh, I see the huge difference it makes. And once you've carded it a few times. And you just keep going over and over until mm -hmm. it looks. Until it looks like it's ready to go. And when it, once it's basically, the fibers are straight. And then this I can roll off. This is called a roll egg. Roll log. Okay. And I can spin with this. And now I can make thread to make your clothes. I don't know if anybody has noticed, but if you look at your clothes, they're made of thousands of little threads. And every thread starts with a fiber. Um, it could be a plant fiber like cotton, or linen is made out of flax, or it could be an animal fiber like wool. Wool is a very good fiber for spinning. It's very common back in the 1800s. There were more sheep in North Carolina than, than you can imagine. Uh, oh, I bet. Many, many more than what we have now. Wool is a fiber that is uh, fire resistant. It's not fireproof, but it's fire resistant. So for ladies doing cooking, a wool apron was a very good thing. Oh, yes. I can see, I have one of those, but it was a gift, so. I'm not sure, I, I don't think I realized this was the process. Now after this, I presume the threads are then woven? Yes. And if you look, this is a very simple machine. It makes my work easy. I was gonna ask you about the machine. Actually, let's start at the beginning. All righty. All of the first, first clothes that people had, all of the first cloths, were spun just like this on a drop spindle. So think really? about it. Really? Think about it. All the Egyptian mummies and their beautiful linen wrappings were all spun on a drop spindle just like this. Oh my goodness. The Viking ships with their huge square sh sails were made of wool and they were all spun on a drop spindle. Oh my goodness. So imagine the amount of time it would take to spin enough threads to make a Viking sail. They were huge. Oh my and think goodness. about the amount of time it would take 
to spin enough thread to make your clothes. I know. I was just sitting here thinking, how many little threads must there be in these dresses because they're so big? And the lady of the house not only had to make the clothes for the people in her house, she also had to make the bed linens, curtains, tablecloths, towels for washing, towels for the kitchen, any kind of fabric like that a lady would have had to make unless, of course, she could afford to barter or to buy it outright from somebody else. Okay. Yeah. So, well, now that we've got that one, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt okay. you. I'm interested in learning about this machine. Well, that's the thing. That was the old way of spinning. This is a very modern machine. It makes my work so much easier. I can sit here and all I have to do is push the treadle, which spins the drive wheel. Now that's the pedal down there. Mm -hmm. This is the treadle. It spins the drive wheel, which spins the bobbin and flyer. And if you look up here, this is in two pieces. The bobbin is one piece that's separate from the flyer. And, and what's the flyer? This piece is the flyer. Okay. And what's this? This is the flyer. Okay, part that's of the flyer. part of the flyer. The bobbin has a tension on it, which causes it to spin slower than the flyer. And that's what Ooh. causes the thread to take up onto the wheel, onto the bobbin. So a lot of people will come up and think that this is the wool that I'm spinning. Mm. And this is actually the drive band. The wool is going through the orifice and out through here across the hooks onto the bobbin. And you just moved the some the, the, the thread, thread. Mm -hmm. to over a bo over one hook okay. to keep the bobbin more even. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fascinating. Is it hard to learn? 